Well, we reached this point, my friends. We're here to talk about Spider-Man Far From Home, the last MCU movie to come out in the theater. And pretty much ever since then, we've been waiting for news of when Marvel will return and all this sort of stuff. And albeit we are going to get the Disney Plus stuff, God damn, I'm really, really hoping that um Marvel, like I'm really hoping Marvel just doesn't delay any more movies, you know, anytime soon. Because I'll be honest, it's like okay, like there's no point of delaying them again and again and again. Like okay, like I'll be damn honest with you, like hell, if we can't get Black Widow, if the movie theaters don't open up, just put Black Widow and all the other MCU movies on Disney Plus, like. I like hell. I know that's gonna get you guys less money, but hey, we gotta get these movies out, okay? And hell, besides, uh, I mean, I mean, hell, I've been enjoying the Disney Plus shows. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, goddamn, I really want to just see some movies already, Marvel movies already. You know, like I mean, hell, we're supposed to get two movies so for this year with existing MCU characters, Spider Man and Black Widow, and two new movies with and whole entirely new different characters which is Shang-Chi and the Internals, but, um, I just wanted to mention that, um, straight away, and all this sort of stuff, I mean, um, I mean, guys, we gotta put these movies, if we can't put them in theaters, we have to put them on streaming, that's unfortunately how it's gonna go, but, with that being said in mind, let's talk about Spider-Man Far From Home, the most recent Spider-Man movie we've gotten from Marvel and Sony, yeah, Sony still, um, has the rights to Spider-Man, and Marvel can't do anything about it, you know? And Sony won't give up the rights to Spider-Man, which is super goddamn frustrating, considering that um, it's hard to watch these movies, considering that they're on different-ass streaming services, and also because, well, uh, it's just retarded, okay? It's just really, really retarded, but, I mean, eh, we have to live with it, but... Um, we're going to talk about Spider-Man Far From Home, and spoiler alert, I thought it was a pretty good movie, you know, and all this sort of stuff. Um, I think on my, like, when I first watched it, I was like, yeah, that was okay, I think. But now, thinking about it more, or rewatching it, because I rewatched it, because I have to do it on digital and all this sort of stuff, all this crap. Um, I kind of realized that, hey, it's actually not that bad. No, I don't, I'm not saying I hate the movie, it's just that, well, uh. Um, I guess I didn't, I didn't care for it. I don't know, maybe because I was still living up against the Endgame hype. I don't know, did I, I don't know, did X-Men Dark Phoenix come out around the same time too? Maybe it did, but I don't know. But anyways, of course, we're going to go through the good stuff in this movie, and we're going to go through the bad stuff, and whatnot, or have you, so let's go for the good stuff. <sighs> Alright. Um, one of my, one of the good stuff from this movie, number one, is Tom Holland is still a pretty good Spider-Man. I've been enjoying Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man, and I know that people have not been liking it, considering that it's just so different from Toby's and from um, Garfield's version of Spider-Man, and I have to just say this, guys, come on, it's a whole entirely different take on Spider-Man in the MCU, or in the movies, and I'm going to talk about this later on, but we're slowly getting to the Spider-Man we know from the comics and from the original, like, Raimi movies and all this sort of stuff which I'll talk about much sooner, much later, but I still think Tom Holland is, pretty, is a pretty good Spider-Man, and I think he's a good actor in general. I love Tom Holland. I love his work and whatnot, so have you. Um, everyone from the, from the first movie is good. I've gotten used to... Um, well, I, would, I wouldn't say I've gotten used to Marissa Tomei as Aunt May, but the thing is that in this movie, she isn't in it all that much. She's in it for a few scenes, and then that's pretty much it. I'm kind of... It's kind of sad that she wasn't in the movie all that much. Hopefully she'll be, she'll be in the movie more in Spider-Man 3. You know, but, I mean, I kind of like the interactions. Or I like the interactions between, um, between, um, Tom's, between Tom and, uh, Marissa. Definitely, um, a lot, you know. And, of course, uh, John Favreau is Happy Hogan. You know, he's still enjoyable. He's still a good and good funny character. It's a good thing that they brought back John Favreau for the MCU. I thought they were done with him. But hey, apparently it wasn't, you know. And I gotta say, 2019 was a good year for Jon Favreau, too. You know, because The Mandalorian came out later that year. Man, I'm still waiting for a season. Man, we're still wanting to know what will happen in Season 3. But that's something entirely different. Um, remember from the first movie, like I said, is good. I gotten used to... Um, 
a lot of the other characters and what sort of have you. Like, I would have to say that in terms of Spider-Man's, out of all of his characters, I've definitely gotten used to Flash, Flash Thompson. I didn't like him in the first one because, well, I guess because I wasn't used to Flash Thompson not being that, that football jock stereotype sort of character. But, I mean, this is supposed to be like a modern day version of the bully, you know, because... The bully is, you know, usually the douchebag and whatnot or have you. And I can tell you this from a guy who's currently in high school. There are a lot of goddamn douchebags you will meet in high school. And for the most part, all of them are just skinny, weak kids that you can easily maybe win a fight in probably maybe in a second or so. Um, let's talk about some of the new stuff. Jake Gyllenhaal. I really enjoyed him as Mysterio. And it's funny how Jake Gyllenhaal, because the weird thing was that um, this is I know I'm going off topic a lot here, but I I learned like like after this movie that Jake Joan Hall was supposed to play Spider Man in Spider Man Two if Tobey Maguire didn't recover from his backache. And now he's in a Spider Man movie. So I think that's that's really damn cool. Um any scene with Mysterio in it is great. The Mysterio illusion scene, that was the best part of the movie for me. That was the biggest highlight. Like that just sold the movie for me. And also the action scenes were also great as well. You know, these movies still have pretty full, pretty cool, fun action scenes. Um, Peter and MJ's relationship, you know, um, I thought was better developed in this movie because in the last movie, you know, Tom or you no know, Peter was trying to get at Liz Allen. But of course, um, um, like Mary Jane or well, technically Michelle Jones, as she's now called was kind of put to the sideline as just kind of like a like a secondary character. And it's only until the end they reveal her name as MJ because uh, you know, uh um you know, because this is our Mary Jane Watson technically, or she's not called Mary Jane Watson, she's Michelle Jones, but um yeah, but once again Tom and Zendaya's um acting Tom Parr, those are really good those two are really good actors. And I wanted to see how the relationship ends up in Spider-Man 3 because, of course, by the end of the movie, we all know that big twist. And speaking of which, let's talk about the post credit scene because the post credit scene, J. Jonah Jameson appearing, you know, playing play, being played by J.K. Simmons, that was freaking awesome. It was freaking awesome. It was amazing to have him back as J. Jonah Jameson. I mean... That's really like, I mean, holy crap, this, I mean, literally, holy crap, it's like, damn it, like, like, J.K. Simmons, he was too good as J. Jonah Jameson, so we have to bring him back. So, does that technically mean that we have to bring back other characters that were played by different actors? I mean, Marvel has done this again. Well, I actually done this again, I actually just realized this. And, spoiler alert for WandaVision, but they brought back Evan Peters as Quicksilver, and I don't, and we don't know... If that Quicksilver is the same one from the Fox films, but hey, we have to see. The show is still going on. I'll bring you a full review on it, but you probably already know by it because I think it got because I got spoiled. You know, and all this sort of stuff. But uh yeah. But the post credit scene with J. John Jameson. That was great. That was great. Alright, so now I mentioned all the positive things about this movie, which I have a good list of positive things to say about the movie. You know, I'm not too overly critical about movies, to be quite honest with you, but if I if there's something I don't like, I'll mention it, but it's not really a big issue because I can understand the concept behind things, but um yeah, now the bad stuff. Spider-Man isn't is never in New York. Now, hear me out, guys. I want to I want just to tell you guys when I heard that Spider-Man would be brought into the MCU, I was very excited I would Imagine that we would get some new web swinging scenes, you know, scenes that um maybe could be even better than hell. I mean, I don't know. It, it was going to be a big task for Marvel to top the web swinging scenes from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Because quite frankly, honest with you guys, that was probably the good stuff about that, about, about those two movies was the web swinging scenes, you know, and them recreating New York and them doing a great job recapturing, you know, New York and all this sort of stuff. But what I've noticed is that this version of Spider-Man 
for the most part, he's never in New York. Like, throughout the whole movie. Like, Spider-Man, like Spider-Man Homecoming is the only movie where he's actually in New York. You know? But I really... But what I mean is, he's not in New York City. Because we know in New York, there's five provinces and whatnot, sort of have you. Like, there's five... Like, New York City's made up of five... Um, it's made up of five cities or five towns. Like, I won't get into them, but... I mean, I really wanted Spider-Man to be in Manhattan, the main New York City, where the skyscrapers are, you know, what not sort of have you. I want to see him, you know, web-swinging around the Avengers Tower and all this sort of stuff, but he never does that in Homecoming, but I at least appreciate that he was in New York. But in other movies, like in Civil War, he was in New York for a little bit, and then he's in Germany. And then, same thing in Avengers Infinity War. He's in New York, and then he's on Titan. And then for... um. You know, Avengers Endgame, he's in upstate New York. And then here, now he's in Europe. Now, I don't mind Spider-Man going to different places. He's doing something new. But I'm hoping for the third movie, and I'm hoping for the third movie, he's finally in Manhattan doing Spider-Man things, you know? I'm hoping because of that. That's a little criticism I have. I know it may come out, came out, might seem like a nitpick, but, like, I mean, I don't know, like, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. That's something that's kind of been bothering me really lately. And I, it's not something major. But now these two are something pretty major. Why did they make Nick Fury a scroll? A scroll? So one of the um, end credit scenes is it's revealed that Maria Hill and Nick Fury, who are present in this movie, were actually scrolls. You know, they were actually impersonating those two. Now, actually, this created a big mystery. Was Maria Hill actually a scroll? Like, is Maria Hill, like, is she actually a scroll and not a real person? Like, I'm not a real person from Earth. Like, hell, I don't know. Maybe she is. That would be a pretty big twist. But they made Nick Fury a scroll who Talos is impersonating him. And I know, and this is setting up Secret Invasion because we know Nick Fury is in space. But honestly, that's kind of disappointing, to be quite honest with you. Like, like to be quite honest, like, like, you know... Like, I really wanted Nick Fury and Spider-Man to really interact, you know? Those two set of characters are really cool to be interacting with one another. Like, they interact a lot in the Ultimate Spider-Man comic books, and hell, even in the cartoon, which I thought that was some of the best stuff in that show. But not having Nick Fury being there is just, like, that's kind of disappointing, and it kind of and it kind of sucks. Now, it's not known how long Nick Fury's been a scroll, but I can speculate that Nick Fury was a scroll. Okay, I definitely think Nick Fury was definitely present at Tony Stark's funeral. Okay, he was definitely there, and he probably left probably quick afterwards. Because this movie takes place in 2024, well over a year after Avengers Endgame. So he's probably up in space now, and Talos was probably there just to fill in some... Just to fill... Just to fill him in, or just to be there, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And what sort of have you. But it's a dis- but that's really disappointing, you know? Now, maybe you could have done... Maybe... I don't know. Maybe... Like, I don't know. Like, I'll be very honest with you. Like, if they didn't make Nick Fury a scroll, Nick probably would have found out that Mysterio was a bunch of bullshit. But, I mean, come on. Like, that's really... I think that's really stupid, you know? And, like, come on. Like... Like, I mean, Samuel, ja- Samuel Jackson still did a good job portraying... Talos being Nick Fury, like Nick, like I still love Samuel Jackson, but uh, that kind of just sucks, honestly. So that sucks, but I know we'll see we'll see Nick Fury again in, of course, um, in Secret Invasion, which that definitely seems like that definitely seems like that's what they're doing and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, and the last criticism I have for this movie, and this is something that people have pointed out, which I didn't really notice. Well, I kind of noticed, but. I didn't really think about it was all the MCU Spider-Man villains, Vulture and Mysterio, the two we were introduced so far. Um, technically these two, like they're technically Iron Man villains. Like, okay, get this. In Spider-Man Homecoming, um, Vulture hates Tony Stark because uh because he put his because he put him out of business and what I have you. He put he he Tony Stark basically made the vulture lose his job practically and that's why then the vulture starts hating him 
But the one thing I give to Spider-Man Homecoming, to Spider-Man Homecoming's Vulture, is that at least the Vulture has a personal connection to Spider-Man. Okay, I can get past him hating Tony Stark. But there was a connection between Spider-Man and the Vulture, which is why I think Vulture was a little bit better than Mysterio. Like, I'll be honest. But this version of Mysterio, he hates Tony Stark because he stole his barf tech, his illusion tech. You know, and all this sort of stuff. And there's not really much of a personal connection between, you know, Spider-Man and Quentin Beck. Like, yeah, Quentin Beck knows Spider-Man's identity, which I think that's maybe the first time in a movie where the villain knows Spider-Man's secret identity. Like, like, but like, I'm not saying that I, I'm not saying Jake Gyllenhaal was a bad Mysterio. It's just that, come on, at least get some personal connection between him and Mysterio. And I also got to agree with some people, but Spider-Man, they need to stop making Spider-Man villains being related to Iron Man. Like, come on, like, Spider-Man needs to make his own enemies, you know? Like, hell, I don't know what they're, who, which, what, who they're going to introduce in Spider-Man 3. I'm hearing it's going to be Electro, like Jamie Foxx Electro. I mean, come on, don't make Jamie Foxx Electro be an ex-Stark Industries employee and all this sort of stuff, okay? Make have a personal connection between him and Spider-Man or something like that. I don't know what they're going to do, but I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind him maybe being an ex-Stark employee because I think that's actually how he was in the comics, actually. But, like, I mean, come on. Like, man, I mean, have a personal connection between him. That's all I'm saying. But, I mean, yeah, those are the three things that I really kind of threw me off. Because I overall have to say, this movie is not bad at all. It's a good movie. It's a good, damn good movie. And of course, you know, this movie is really hinting at, is really setting up Spider-Man 3. And I think it really sets up Spider-Man 3 pretty well. We know what's going to happen in the third movie. or We kind of know at least, you know. I mean, there's still rumors about Toby and Andrew showing up in that one. You know, so, uh, yeah, but... Um, I mean, we just have to wait and see what happens next. So overall, uh, thank you all so much for listening to my review on Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, and that pretty much wraps up all the MCU movies that I have missed reviewing. And so what's now going to happen is that every, is that probably throughout the week, I'm going to tackle, probably tomorrow you're going to see my retrospect on Captain America Civil War and Doctor Strange. Because instead of reviewing them, I want to talk about what happened, about what happened when these movies came out, what was happening during my, during that point in my life, and all this sort of stuff. Besides reviewing the movies, but with that being said in mind, thank you all for watching. What do you think of Spider Man: Far From Home? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Or did you, or you don't really care and you're just here just to see what's up? Are you excited for Spider Man Three? Let me know in the comments because you're probably not going to commentate at all and people are not going to watch this video because I care way, way too much about making videos. So I'll see you all next time. See you all later.